This is Indrajit Kumar, Assistant Professor, IRE, Hyderabad. In this video, we will see method of methods of manufacturing of composites. So, our lecture topic, this video topic will be what? First, we will see about the properties of viscar. Then, what is polymer? That type of polymer. Then, laminated composite materials. Then, its inner form of constituent material is whatever the materials are required for the manufacturing. Then, we will come to manufacturing methods of layup and curing method. Then is the strength and the stiffness advantages. What are the strength and stiffness advantages is there in the application. Then next we will see cost advantages and weight advantages. So these things we will see in this video. So first properties of viscar. A whisker has essentially the same near crystal size diameter as a fiber. So whisker also having nearly diameter size of the fiber only. Generally, it is very short and stubby, but for fiber, that diameter to the length ratio was, should be greater than 1000. But here, that short length is short. So, if same you can say our fiber of shorter length, that is the whisker. Although the length to diameter ratio can be in the 100. So, there it was for fiber, it's in the range of 1000, but in case of whiskers, it's in the range of 100. We suppose if 1 mm diameter is there, then 100 mm. Up to the length or 200 mm length will be of the whiskers. Thus, a whiskers is an even more obvious example of the crystal bulk material property defying ACE paradox. Means what? It depends on the size and how the bigger size is there or diameter because as longer as it will be there, they will have that much stiffer. So that's why here this paradox is there. A whisker is even more perfect than a fiber and therefore exhibits seven higher properties because of just now I mentioned that their length is shorter. So they have seven higher properties compared to the whisker. So if you will see by the size, then whisker is more better option for the from the fiber. But fiber having the longer length, even thousand times more than thousand times in whatever the diameter to the length ratio is there. So wherever we require the short length that there we can use whisker instead of the fiber. So whisker is obtained by crystallization on a very small scale resulting in a nearly perfect alignment of the crystal. Suppose we have to align something or from here to here just I'll just see here. So from here to here we have a we have to make a straight line. First one it's okay and if we will make second one then it's a just here. It's a difficult to make right but for shorter length you can see here almost same we can draw so in longer length means in case of fiber that is difficult to maintain the long distance that longer length but in case of fiber sorry in case of whisker it's easier okay so that's a nearly perfect alignment of the crystal so in this case the perfect alignments are there right but comparison to the fiber materials such as iron have crystalline structure with a theoretical strength of just see this one 20 GPA or you can say 29 lakh PSI that much theoretical strength is there. Commercially available structural steel which are mainly iron that having iron mostly nine, more than 99% iron is there have a strength ranging from 75,000 PSI to about 1 lakh PSI means 75 to 1 lakh PSI that is up to 570 to 690 megapascal their strength is there. Now, so the discrepancy between theoretical and actual strength is caused by imperfection in the crystalline structure of the steel. So just see here. Theoretical is 20 GPA. And here we are getting how much? 570 MPA, megapascal. So here gigapascal or you can say this one that 20. So 20 into 10 to the power 3 giga, sorry mega Pascal. So just see the difference 20,000, right? And here we are getting only 572 to 970. So, too much difference here. This is our what theoretical strength, this is the actual strength. So, these differences because of their structural arrangement, how or you can say deficiency in the structure. So, just see here the discrepancy between what is because of the imperfection in the crystalline structure. So, because of the imperfection, actually, it should be according to theory, it should be. 20 GPA, right? But how much we are getting? 0.57 GPA only. So that much difference is there. 
those imperfections are called dislocation and are easily moved from ductile material so these are the dislocation this whatever they were the atom should be there they just got dislocated and hence that can be moved for the ductile material if ductile you want then these things you have to remove that if that, that will be dislocation will be more means that becomes the brittle material that you can see this imperfection even if you will say, take a chalk that pencil chalk and you just break it into two parts you can see a small small mini holes will be there and because of that only it's easily you can break by your hand also so because of that imperfections only or dislocations of the um, atoms but in case of ductile material that dislocation should not be there as much as they will be perfect that means they will have the ductile property the movements of dislocation changes the relation of the crystal and hence the strength and the stiffness of the material so once these things just now I explained that if dislocation will be lesser then that will be more ductile if dislocation will be more that becomes more brittle so that depends on what the strength and the stiffness of the material as much as dislocation will be lesser that means they will have the strength and the stiffness if dislocation will be more then they have lesser strength and lesser the stiffness Fora, nearly perfect whisker. So fora is the example of nearly perfect whisker having all there is no or negligible dislocation or you can see few dislocation exist in the flora and that's why it's a you can see that perfectly whisker is there. Thus whisker of iron has significantly higher strength than steel in bulk. So whisker of iron have significantly higher strength than steel in bulk form. So in bulk form we are taking iron of this one also then in iron lesser what imperfections are there or you can say lesser dislocations are there so because of that iron having higher strength compared to the steel in bulk form whiskers cannot be used alone so whiskers it's not like that any just it same like fiber fiber cannot be used alone some matrix is required so similarly whiskers also cannot be used alone for that also some external matrix is required or other things so so a direct comparison between whiskers and metal is not meaningful. So again, we cannot use directly whiskers. Then we can, it's obvious we cannot compare also with the metals. Similarly, like just fiber. The binder material is usually called a matrix. So whatever the things which we can bind the matrix, that is called the bind the uh, whiskers, that is called matrix just like fiber also. Not to be confused with the mathematical concept of a matrix. So means this is not the matrix that matrix and determinant. This is not just the matrix is name. Means what? If suppose for the roof, what happened? First we are putting this iron mesh type, right? Over that we are putting mixture of sand, cement, stones, these things. So that is the combination of that mixture is the matrix, and this is here the what reinforcement, or you can say that fiber, the, or you can say fiber of iron is kept in the mesing form and then over that we are putting to support this one and after that only roof is having that much strength so if you will put directly this only iron rod what happened roof will have a strength no even water or anything that will directly come inside and they have the lesser strength also so directly fiber or whisker we cannot use whenever we are using with the matrix only we are using the purpose of the matrix is manifold. So just see what is the support of the fiber or whisker. So what is the purpose of fiber? To just support to the fiber, whisker and protection of the fiber or whisker. So first support or protect. Okay. Then next it's a stress transfer between broken fiber or whisker. So if suppose one fiber or one whisker will get broke. Then what happened? That what stress will transfer to the other one. That is by this one matrix only typically matrix is of considerably lower density stiffness and strength than the fiber or whisker so what we are using the matrix that should have lower density lesser stiffness and lesser strength than the fiber or whisker however the combination of fiber or whisker and the matrix can have very high strength so once this one means what Whatever the matrix we are using that should have lesser density, lesser stiffness and lesser strength than the whisker or fiber. But once we will combine with the fiber and matrix that becomes even more stronger. So just see how about the combination of fiber or whisker and the matrix can have very high strength and stiffness yet still have low 
density. Why? Because already we are using lesser denser material, less density material. So whatever the weight we will add, that much only the weight will be there, but their property will not increase. And that's why we are forming what? We are just combining the fibers, whiskers with the matrix so that we can increase their strength and stiffness, but still density or you can say mass will remain lesser. Means now mass to strength rays or density to strength rays that range will increase and that only we require this lesser weight should be there and more strength should be. Matrix material can be polymer, metal, ceramic or carbon that can be used anything right metal, ceramic or carbon as a matrix material. The cost of each matrix escalates in that order as does the temperature resistance. So how much as the cost of each matrix increases in order as does the temperature resistance. So whatever the material having higher temperature resistance means they have higher their cost means they can sustain if suppose someone is up to 50 degree only they can sustain right their cost will be less okay if now other material of 100 degree then cost of this material will be higher some material having 1000 degree so that 1000 degree will have too high cost compared to these two so as much as they have the temperature resistivity power they have that much their cost okay now come to polymer so polymer, poly means many and mer means only one like just monomer. So unit or one molecule exists in at least three major forms. So the minimum that like three different or you can say just three, basically three different types are there. But other types are also possible. But what we will see that only of three types. First, linear one, then branched and third one, cross linked. That also branched type but cross linked. So let's see the example. Here this is the linear one just it's not like that linear is always a straight this should be only have one direction right there is no branching if no branching at all means that is linear now in this case just here this is the linear one right this is the linear one but here now it's branched here branched here branched so this is the example of branched now second one is cross link so just here this is this you can say that is the linear one then this also is a, another example of linear one but these things are just see how they are crossed, right? They are just so even this one is crossing this also, crossing this also, right? So that's why their name is a cross linked polymer. So generally, the mainly these three types are of polymers are there. A linear polymer is merely a chain of words. So it's just a combined in state form that can be of any design that we can, right? So that is just a linear, means there is no branch. A branched polymer consists of a primary chain. So this is the primary chain, okay? A chain of mers with other chain that are attached. So this is the other chain which is attached to the primary chain, right? So that type are called branched one, okay? A cross-linked polymer has large number of what? Three-dimensional, highly interconnected chain as in the figure 1.2. So to see here. So this is highly interconnected here also it's connected here also it's connected this is connected here connected here here like that so highly connected that is the cross-linked polymer the three okay so linear polymer have the least strength and stiffness so this is the least one okay very cross-linked polymer have the most so this one cross-linked having why because just here or you can see this polymer or this branch is held by this also, by this also. So when two things will hold anyone, definitely that will be a stronger, right? So this having the highest and this, so this having the least and this having the highest, what? The strength and stiffness. Okay. Hmm. Because of their inherently stiffer and a stronger internal structure. That is the reason. The three main classes of structural polymer are rubber, thermoplastic and thermoset. So these three are the what examples of polymer. So rubber are cross-linked polymer that have a semi-crystalline stage well below room temperature at that means below room temperature that have semi-crystalline structure but act as the rubber we all know above room temperature remember the challenger rubber zero rings that fails so catastrophically means above the room temperature okay it's a 
like act means it's just like acting as a rubber at the room temperature and that's why we can erase or we can use the rubber elastic on so at room temperature that is in the form of rubber but and at the less than room temperature that is in the form of semi crystalline structure okay thermoplastical polymer that branch but generally do not cross link very much so they are branch means that is of the second type okay some cross links are there but not that much okay thus they usually can be repeatedly softened by heating and hardening by cooling so what so means once this will be there right so we can repeatedly add cool heat all right so in this case we can do repeatedly or you can see if less number of branches suppose this one is not there this one is not there means very less cross is there then we can add that we can heat again and again and according to our requirement we can give the shape but that is not in the case of thermoset thermoset having too much cross linked so once we melt that one in a starting itself once we form after that we cannot melt that one just the best example is the now what that water water right that one liter water bottle that is of thermoset means once they formed in that form now they cannot melt and they cannot reuse that one right so now that's why that is biodegradable type we are using or just a plastic polythene that also is of you no know, thermoset type once that form after that you cannot melt it you cannot that is not a degrading also so that are the example of thermoset and having many cross linked one okay so uh, thus usually can be repeatedly softened by heating and hardening by cooling okay examples of thermoplastic include nylon polyethylene and polysulfone thermosets are polymer that are chemically reacted until almost all the molecules are irreversibly cross linked so they will react until all will have the cross linked in a three dimensional network thus once an epoxy has set it cannot be changed in the form so means only once we can form whatever the shape we require but second time we cannot form why because they are still till the last molecule of that one just almost all the molecules are irreversibly cross means we cannot reverse that one so we cannot melt or we cannot reheat that one even if you will read that no effect will be there on that one examples of thermoset includes epoxies phenolics and polyamides and in home you can see that polyamides only we can see in home like pressure cooker is there so pressure cooker having hand black handle right that is of mm, the same example of thermoset so you can use that's why when you after heating also there is no change in that one you can hold it's you know, won't feel hot right that is made up of bakelite and that comes under the polyamide group a typical organic epoxy matrix material such as namco 2387 okay 13 has a density of 0.044 pound per inch cube that is 11.9 kilo newton per meter cube compressive strength of 20000 psi that is 0.158 gpa then compressive module of 5600 that is 56000 sorry 560000 psi which is 3.86 gpa and silicon strength of 42 or 4200 psi that is around 0.029 gpa and tensile modulus of 490000 psi that is 3.38 gpa so this is the compressive strength okay of organic epoxy other matrix material include metals that can be made to flow around an in place fiber system by diffusion bonding or by heating and vacuum so other matrix material right include metal that can be made how that can be made so say in place fiber around in so just put the fiber or example of the roof what we are doing we are putting in around fiber and over that what system by diffusion bonding or by heating so what we are allowing those cement sand matrix to diffuse over there or by heating and vacuum in, vacuum infiltration so by these methods we can add okay the other metal in that one common example includes aluminium titanium and nickel chromium alloy so in aluminium titanium and in nickel chromium alloy that is a common example of this one ceramic matrix composite materials can be cast from a molten slurry around a steel in fiber with random orientation so just a random orientation that is not fixed orientation or with preferred flow direction orientation because of steering or 
some other manner of introducing. So just see ya. So we can go with this cleared in five one in any random direction you can move and according to that one. But if some particular direction is required along the flow direction, then in that direction only you have to steer. So just see with preferred flow direction orientation. Why? Because of steering or some other manner of introducing the ceramics. So by some other way you can add the ceramics or just by steering. Alternatively, ceramic mixture, ceramic matrix material can be vapor deposits deposited around a collection of already in place fiber. Okay, so ceramic materials can be vapor deposited also on the place of fiber. Okay, now we will see the what manufacturing process. So before that, what are the things required? Right, for manufacturing anything, definitely some things are required. So what? That is called the initial form of constituent material, just like sand, iron, then cement. These things are the initial constituent. By combining those things only, we can form the material. So, the fiber and matrix material can be obtained commercially in a variety of forms, both individually and as laminate. So, laminate, they are plural. This many lamina or laminate is used and that is called as a lamina. Okay. Hmm. So, fibers are available individually or as roving. Roving is already we are seeing the bundle of that one, which is a continuous bundle but not twisted. That should be a straight, right? Groups of fiber that we can use. The fiber can be unidirectional or interwoven. That can be unidirectional or internally, they are just combined. Fibers are often saturated or coated with resinous materials such as epoxy which is subsequently used as matrix material so that fiber already we had seen fiber cannot be used alone so means something is required so what that is of resin type so resinous material such as epoxy okay that is used as a matrix material the process is referred to as pre-impregnated and such form of pre-impregnated fiber are called pre -prex. so first what we have to do first we have to pre-impregnate and it's just like even if you will see there also, if first we are putting this iron mesh and over that they are putting some that liquid or you can see the mixture of this cement over this one and then only they are putting the mixture. So before adding or just you can say, suppose two things you have to stick, right? So what they are doing over this one, or the best example of this is what, have you seen that envelope inside that thread is there. So that is more stronger compared to the only paper envelope. In paper envelope, what they are doing, that paper envelope is a matrix. So in paper envelope, they are putting some gums and over that they are putting that mess of the threads. So because so that only is called the impregnated. Right. So adding of that gum so that that threads will get a stick that is called impregnated, pre-impregnated and that only is called the pre -prex. For example, unidirectional fiber is an epoxy matrix are available in a tape form. Let's see here. That tape also you can see in the market is there. Normal tape, whatever the cello tape we are using that having the very but in market, you can see that fiber tape, they generally we are calling that as fiber tape. So tape will be there and inside that tape, very small, small, this type of line will be there. That are the fibers, right? Because of that fibers, even cello tape, you can tear with your hand also. But that fiber tape, you cannot. Why? Because of this fibers. Okay. So over that, first in that fiber, some gums are there. That just uh, to stick this one and that only we are sticking. That's impregnated. Okay, where the fiber run in the lengthwise direction of the tape. So that fiber along the is if this is length so along like this, it's a there. The fiber are held in position not only by the matrix but by a removal, removable backing that also prevents the tape from sticking together in the so not only that is required. Another one what matrix but a but by a removable removable backing. That's why even you can see otherwise what happened then in that itself. That will get a stick. So inner layer that fiber is there, right? In that gum is there, and outer layer, what happens? That also is removable backing material is there. So that this is not sticking over there. This one, suppose this is the or just this length is there of the tape. So over that, once you will make a roll, then over and over that will come. So what happened? That will stick there itself. Then we cannot use. So on the upper surface of this one, what they are using. They are using removal backing. So means once they will another layer of the tape will come, then this will not stick. We can remove this layer and we can stick wherever we want. Okay. The tape is very similar to the widely 
used glass reinforced. So, finally used glass reinforced in the same manner, tape also is formed. Heavy duty packets, the strapping tapes. For heavy duty, these type of tapes we are using. Similarly, pre packed clothes or mats are available in which the fiber are interwoven and then pre impregnated with resin. So, that resin just I said that gum. So, that is just used. Okay. Other variations of these principles form of fiber and matrix exist. So, other forms are also available in that one. Now, the first method that is the lay up method by which we can manufacture and we can prepare the composites. So, first, three principal layer process for laminated fiber reinforced composite material are so first three are what? Winding, laying, and molding. Okay, so winding is not something is there, just wind over that one. So, because of that, also that becomes strong. And the best example is what? Bat. You can see player also near to the toe of the bat, they are just putting some thread type, right? That fiber type. So, that, that becomes the strong. Second, laying. Laying is one over the one layer is there, put another layer, and then whatever you want, you just stick that is of the type of laying and molding is just first melt up to that temperature and then whatever the mold is there put into that one after getting cool you will get that shape the choice of a layer process as well as cutting process the same depends on many factors right so this process depends on many factors what okay part size and shape so how which part you have to make what price should be there how and what shape should be there, right? Then cost, schedule, familiarity with particular technique. So by these things, I mean these, these things depends how the layer process will be there on which layer process we have to use. Winding and laying operation includes filament winding. So just that three I just told you a thread with them winding over the bat. So that is most filament, that filament winding, tape, laying, draw, wrapping and close winding or wrapping. So these are just filament winding consists of a passing a fiber through a liquid resin and pin winding it on a mandrel. So mandrel is that over the surface where that's we are winding. So just like that is there so over the bat and the, suppose this is the top of the bat here is the handle so here we are winding. Sometimes you can see in the small if suppose that got handle got broken so then after inserting the handle and here also that filament we are binding so that that handle should have the strength. That is the filament binding. The fibers are wrapped at a different orientation on the mandrel to yield strength and stiffness in many directions. So it's not only one direction, in many direction also can bind to get the higher strength. Subsequently, the entire assembly, including the mandrel, is cured after which the mandrel is removed. So just after putting that wind over there and then remove that mandrel, okay, and then you will get that one. If the mandrel is a sand casting, then using a water hose to clean out the new pressure vessel, dissolve and sand casting. Okay, I just in YouTube video also you can see they are just forming that uh, sand and all, they are just inserting something and then they are putting the whatever, whatever the molten, um, molten aluminium or anything and after getting good, you have that they are getting that shape. Means after removing that sand and all. So whatever on the mold of that is there that you have to remove. Some mandrels are barrel stave like assembly. So one over the other that is there. That must be disassembled through an opening in the new pressure vessel. So that you have to first disassemble by removing that pressure. Tape laying starts with a tape consisting of fiber in a pre impregnated form held together by a removable backing material. So already we had seen that also is of the layer method example only okay so the tape is unwound and laid down to form the desired shape in the desired orientation of tape layer so whatever the point is they just remove one that unwound over there and according to the desired orientation we can use that one tape laying can be by hand or automated with an automated tape laying machine so that can be just over that take this trip put the resin over there and then put the fiber over there so that can be made by hand also or by automated machine also. Cloth winding or laying begins with pre-impregnated cloth that is unrolled and deposited in the desired form and orientation. So in the starting whatever is there, whatever the design is required. So first you have to design that one 
and then according to that start what winding so that a particular design you will get in the clothes also seat molding compound that smc consists of randomly oriented choked fiber oriented here is beach will be there right that is oriented choked fiber choked fiber you saw all you can see almost whisker right or choked is a small small fiber in a matrix of resin and filler okay so seat molding in that just filler or you can see that just like come so filler and the choked fiber SMC is produced in the continuous manner, so that should be continuous and whatever the size required according to that we are cutting and we can use. Note that the polyethylene film protects the roller system from getting gummed up. Just they are gummed up with the resin filler paste. So whatever the resin filler paste is there, their polyethylene film is there, which protects to stick in that one. The rug-like rolls of SMC are then used in compression molding machine. To create large parts such as the side of car and truck. So first they form the small one, and then in that machine they are just pressing that one, right? Okay, that compression molding to form side cars of truck. That cars are on trucks sides. With that bigger bigger things they can form by the compression molding. Now next is curing method. Curing primarily refers to the process of solidification of polymer matrix materials. So see here is the solidification. In layer method, what happened? That was just one over the other layer we are putting, and in some this one molding also that molding process. In this one molding, right? So in molding, what happened after I am putting in that mold, we are just cooling, and that we are going to solidify. So that method is the curing of polymer matrix material. Metal matrix material are simply heated and cooled around fibers to solidify. So just first metal matrix get it heated. Put the fibers and then allow them to heat. Once after that, allow to solidify. Means allow to cool, so that we can solidify. Ceramic matrix and carbon matrix material are either vapor deposited, mixed with fiber in the slurry and hardened. Means what? Either in the vapor range or vapor deposited, or just mixed with the fiber of in a slurry and hardened. So in a slurry, that just multi-type liquid. Just put in that one and then allow to harden this. Allow them to get cool. So once it will get cool, that becomes harder. Or in the case of carbon, subjected to repeated liquid infiltration. So in case of carbon, again and again you have to what liquid infiltration followed by the carbonization, right? By carbonization method, we can allow them to get solidified. Thus, we concentrate here on curing of polymer. Okay, so just here. For the most, sorry, no. okay. For thermoset matrix material, that thermoset that means we, we cannot reuse again. Once they will form that are almost there, all the particles is getting what irreversible form. Okay, so that one heat is usually added as a catalyst to speed the natural chemical reaction of polymerization. So what they are you know, already we are seeing that they are forming the cross link of two um, last almost the all the atoms of that one. So that's why by chemical reaction, two-part epoxy such as found in your local hardware store, whatever is that you just done, consists of a tube of epoxy and a tube of chemical hardener that react when mixed. So that we can see, or just simply that we are telling this one, and that uh, if you will go to hardware shop and you can say this one uh, binder or. If that is there, just they will give you in one packet itself two things are there. You have to mix it, and even you can just or uh, you can see the water tap and all. If suppose they are leaking, they are just putting over them, and after that it becomes too hard. Okay, that one. Hmm. But is given off as a product of the reaction, so that after that it becomes very hard. For virtually all epoxies, volatile gases are given off during growing. So all level, whatever the volatile gases and all other things are there. That is getting removed. That given off. That removed from the curing. Those volatile gases come from heating the solvent used to keep the epoxy from curing prior to assembly time. So these things should get heated before that solvent before the curing process. In general, the higher the temperature during curing, the shorter the cure time. So as much as the temperature is more, that much uh, shorter will be the cure time. Is that cure? Time will be there. Sort of burning the material of course. Heat is required because now you see why heat is required. So here is the temperature is there. So some catalyst and or hardened so not do not react below at the critical temperature. Some the 
some catalyst are there which is not reacting or which not speed up the reaction at the lower temperature means higher temperature for that is required. Second, molecular mobility is necessary for contact of reactive chemical. If they will not move, then we cannot combine that one. So for the molecular movement also, if higher temperature will be there, then only they can move and they can mix properly. Heat drives off volatile from solvent and water. Okay. Otherwise, void occurs. Note that volatile will not outgas if pressure is also being applied. So that pressure should not be applied. Next, resin flows more easily to obtain uniform distribution. So that resin flows. That's with the resin only just like in tape also we give an example. They can spread or they can uniform distribution. Pressure is required to consolidate or debulk the fiber and matrix system to squeeze out the excess resin. So just by squeezing, we can remove the excess. Resin, right? Now, strength and stiffness advantages. So, what are the advantages of strength and stiffness? One of the most common way of expressing the effectiveness of strength or stiffness of a material is as a ratio of either of the quantities to the density. So, whatever you require to check, just compare with the density of that one. So, that density is what weight per unit volume. So, if density is lesser and that strength is that is higher, then we can see that is more or just like weight strength to weight ratio should be higher means strength is higher because weight is in denominator so if strength is higher means that is good so such as such an index does not include the cost to achieve a certain strength or stiffness right so that we cannot use that one but cost comparison are probably not valid by themselves because many factors influences the cost beyond raw material not only raw material other things also how to form where you are forming the transportation and all that also depends the cost of that one consider some of the advantages of fiber reinforced composite material very high strength and stiffness are about the most common advantages that come to mind so when we are using the composite material first these two things are coming in mind what that having very high strength and very high stiffness compared to the non we often express those strength and stiffness property not in absolute term but in relative term by dividing them by the density just to how much is more like suppose a strength okay to weight so that's why we are comparing a strength to weight ratio is our we are not directly telling a strength is that much the strength for comparing a strength to weight ratio is now how much it's get improved or how much is there that are particularly attractive in weight sensitive structures such as aircraft or spacecraft are and so in an express craft part is required strength to weight ratio should be very high then only we can so for these things in wherever the weight sensitive things are there there we can use it now next the cost advantages and weight advantages decreasing the cost of a material per pound of a structure depends on increasing manufacturing experiences in a given process or a and de developing new more effective manufacturing technology so these are the costs just initial cost in that we cannot do raw material Definitely, whatever we require. Then, design cost, fabrication cost, and assembly cost. So, these after this only we will get the final product. So, that is called the initial cost. After that, for operating, how much? Like, there, suppose after making this one, we made the generator. Generator cannot run. For that, what we require? The fueling. Or, suppose fan is there. For fan running, electricity is required. So, that electricity bill is the operating cost and it's not operating cost only the maintenance also we have to do or just like bike is there it's not only the bike once you purchase that bike that's over so up to this is the bike cost after that the diesel cost is operating cost and then maintenance of that one like suppose sometimes you have to fill the air then break and all that will be the cost of operating and salvage value is after suppose five year or ten year you are just you want to say or just throw then what will be the cost of that one so overall, this will give you the life cycle cost of any components or elements. Now, weight advantages. What are the benefits of saving weight in a structure? That is the question. So just generally, we can choose from several alternatives. First, we can directly transfer weight saving into saving of fuel so that more efficient operation conditions result. Means if lesser weight will be there, the fuel consumption will be less. Or else, we can carry heavier load of fuel and increase the range of the aircraft. So we have for that we have to we have to take the what heavier amount of more amount of fuel to increase the range or some combination of two is possible that also is possible just take lesser one or just increase the strength of the or decrease the weight so that the range will be higher further consequences of decreased weight of an airplane are the engine thrust wing area and fuel can be decreased so if we decrease that one then our engine thrust fuel that 
the fuel can be that mean area and that can be decreased okay so these things you can refer this okay this is the reference from nptel courses okay where you will get even if you will uh, almost i have explained everything but just for your reference if you wanna you can just go through the nptel course of this one okay so if you have any doubt you can just comment or you can contact me regarding your doubts okay thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates